This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. And welcome to another edition of Silent Voices Monthly News Magazine. Here you can get all the child welfare happenings in the news and social media. Welcome. Today we're going to start things off with another letter from our mailbox. This comes from one of our viewers who watches our program on YouTube channel. This letter comes from a viewer in Europe who views our channel on YouTube. This here is a letter I wrote to my son on Christmas Day. I'd like to share with you and your viewers. You're 18 now and officially free. Free of these monsters. But they have held sway for so very long. Eleven and a half years is enough time to do a lot of damage and make one feel so awkward and unsure about making any moves without their interference. For so long they have ordained where we have met and for how very little time we do meet. Always with eyes looking, watching, studying, scrutinizing, judging. We both learned very early on in the, in the piece that anything we said or did would be held and used against us. Harsh lessons to learn. I remember so clearly how very proud and afraid for you I was when you steadfastly tried to speak up and not be silent. I am so afraid that you will not want to have anything to do with me because of all the lies. Afraid that you will feel that I will really did not fight for you and try hard enough. Terrified that I may never see you baby, brother and sister again. And that even if I do, they will hate me for not being able to protect them. Though I fought with all my strengths, so many nasty words have been thrust upon me that I feel so overwhelmed and unsure. Words stick, and it can be hard to get them out of their head once they have been forced upon you so violently and for so very long. And the tears, they continue to fall as I think over it all. And I know that you were thrown a lot of words too. And I wonder what words have stuck inside you. We were so very close, and we could say anything to each other before they came and deliberately set out to destroy that bond. And I know that while they were stalking us before they kidnapped you, the three of you, my precious children who are my life, I became more and more of a nervous wreck, more anxious and scared and high strung. I became irrational as I slept less and worried more, more and more protective also. The more I was ignored as I sought desperately to keep you three safe, the more hysterical and insane I felt. I know that you felt the pressure of this, and I am so sorry. I held on for you, though, and it was always so very easy to love you, my precious child. Your kisses and hugs and words of encouragement, your smile and enthusiasm, your stories and beauty made every struggle, every tear so very worthwhile. It was easier to be strong, strong with you all around, to fight for you and stay on my ground. I could bear any pain thrown my way with you, precious three. The comfort of your presence was enough to hold me on. You were always will be worth everything I told you last time we saw each other, that you make me brave, and this is the truth. Even without you, I am braver and stronger. The thought of you three keeps me going. And while I continue to fight, and why I will not give up, and our story will not go unheard. Our struggle will not have been in vain. It has been and still is harder to fight it alone. Without you, harder to stand up and keep on. 
Every word I said, every deed done has been twisted into something sick and perverted in their eyes. And that has been very hard to bear. Mistakes made out of ever overtiredness and stress. They made a point to dig in and dwell on over the years. Mistakes that would have been forgotten long ago were it not for them. The darkness and the stench of their hate and loathing so cloying that it has been stifling and hard to breathe. And as I write all these words now, my heart feels so heavy. And the tears threaten to fall again. Every time I see a message from you, my heart leaps in joy. And when there is an absence of communication, I feel so tense. I felt like bursting into uncontrollable both tears when you sent the message that I should not feel, I feel. And my heart leaped in joy and relief. It is something that is so hard to remember at times because I do not know that I have not failed. I did everything that I could and strove higher and higher to seek help. But my words and pleas always fell onto deaf and uncaring ears. No matter how far up I plead for your case, strove to, to protect my children and save our precious family. But every time, single time, doors were slammed in my face and the buck was always passed straight back to those who had destroyed our family in the first place. I wish I could turn back time and erase all the horrible things that have been done to us. To escape the awfulness of the reality that our life became, I became friends with so many fantasy characters, some in the pages of books and others on the screen. Even the nasty scenes and easier to bear simply because they are not real. And sometimes they have been such a saving grace in age and facing this unkind world. But for me also, it has helped to know true stories of people who have gone through nightmares. Many so much worse than our own. And come out the other side so much stronger and better and even forgiven their oppressors. These stories have given such hope and encouragement and therefore I will preserve in writing our story because even if it only helps one person, then will have been worthwhile. I know I am fumbling my precious child, but that is simply because I love you so very much. With all my love, always, Mum. And that story there was uh, f from a grieving mother in Europe. The same thing goes on here in the United States of America. Very, very sad. That was the most beautiful letter, and I'm sure that really reiterates what a lot of parents are feeling. I think that sums it up how important contact with your children are. They're experiencing the same thing that you are going through. The story is important to them as it is to others. Don't be silent. Use your voice. If you have a letter you'd like to share with us or like to be on the show, contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. Maria, let's do some YouTubing now. A South Florida business owner recently received a visit from CPS social worker and police officers at his place of business. A former disgruntled employee had allegedly called a child abuse hotline to complain that the business owner was abusing his children by doing drugs, narcotics in front of his children. The social worker and police officer were apparently trying to get access to the man's children to take custody of them. The business owner asked the officer if he had a warrant and if he was under arrest. When the officer answered no to both questions, he stated that they did not have permission to enter his private business, a call center, and that he was not going to answer any questions. He offered to let them talk to his attorney, but they refused and forced their way into his business anyway. When backup police arrived, they assaulted the man and threw him to the floor inside his own place of business, handcuffed him, and took him away. They probably didn't realize that this business owner also maintains Facebook page called South Florida Cop Watch, which documents police abuse of power. The entire incident was captured on video and posted to his Facebook page. Let's take a look at that video now. 
Would you like to tell me what you just told me before? Yes, I'm here with Child Protective Services. She needs to conduct an investigation. And I told you I'm not interested, and, and then you said what? I have to speak to her unless yeah. there's going to be repercussions for the firm to the children. They might have to take them from you. That's not what you said before. You I'm told me. They might have to take the children. You said you don't if speak I don't speak to her, Sorry, they you, steal you, my children. Do you have your ID? Yes. I don't need my ID. Yes, you do, sir. Have my, uh, what crime am I suspected of committing? Child abuse. Child abuse. And Child neglect. Abuse. And neglect. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's why we're here to conduct an investigation. Well, I'm telling you, if you have a warrant, unless you have a I'm warrant, I'm telling you to come inside. I'm here to warrant. speak. Unless you have a warrant, I don't want to speak to you or you. And a uh, warrant to speak to us. Yes. Okay. We still have to. You said you're investigating something, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, my my rights say at that time I can be silent. Okay. And I do have an attorney if you'd like to speak with them. That's fine. I'm fine. I still want to see your children. You're not going to see my children. Okay. So you think I'm not going to see your children? You will not see my children. Okay. Well, he still needs to speak with you. Yep. Yeah. So this is going to happen. We're getting allegations of something having children. So I allegations. Need to talk. Yes, allegations. 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 Mm -hmm. So okay. we need to speak to you reference these allegations. I don't want to speak to you. Okay. All right. Your name is Richard? I don't want to give you my name either. Okay, I'm conducting an investigation, so I need your name. If you're conducting an investigation, I then I have the right to remain silent. Okay, you're you have the right to remain silent. silent. But okay. you have to give me basic identifiable information. No, I don't. Okay. Not until you can What's tell me Richard? which crime I'm Richard, saying. I need you to come outside with me. I'm not coming Richard? outside. Richard? I'm not coming outside. I'm telling you right now, I have I'm conducting an investigation. You're, what you're, you're doing... Giving me your name. Yeah, that's right. I'm, right now, you're obstructing my I'm not obstructing anything okay, because I have not been suspected of committing a crime, and you certainly no problem. haven't told me... 20. Can you just have the Routine 94 come over to the first floor, please? Will you guys please record this? Please, don't put your hands on me, because if you do, you are assaulting me, and I will sue you, okay? Richard, I need you to go ahead and turn around and place your hands behind your back. I will not. What am I being arrested for? Right now you're being detained because you're obstructing my investigation. I think that you guys probably should go read the Constitution. I have not allowed you in here, so right now you're actually you're actually trespassing. I have not consented to you coming in here. I would like you to to get out. There's nothing to investigate. How do you know? How do I know? Because I do know. I, I know I have committed no crime, so there's nothing to investigate. Right now you're obstructing my investigation. I'm not obstructing anything. Which crime do you suspect oh, you me of committing, sir? Yes or no? Which crime okay. have you suspected me of committing? Richard. Which crime do you suspect me of committing, sir? I told you I'm conducting an investigation for child abuse and neglect. Do you understand that? Is that Based on what? Do I have to change my language? To what, where, where do you have any evidence that that occurred? Where's your probable you cause? Well, do you have do you any probable that? cause so to lead you to believe that? You're using words you don't really understand, right? No, I do understand them. Okay. And what I understand is you guys are violating my rights. Okay. I told you if you don't have a warrant yeah, to please you. leave. I told you if you don't have a warrant to please leave. I'm telling you right now I'm not leaving. Because I'm conducting an investigation. And I'm legally right to be here. You don't have a legal right to be okay. here. You're trespassing. Okay, that's fine. Well, that's you don't have a warrant. I'm telling you to leave. If that's the way you want to see it, that's fine. You don't have a warrant, I'm do you? I'm asking you to come outside with me. Do you want to I don't want to come outside. Then I'm not leaving. Okay, well, unfortunately. Well, you're going to have to get your supervisor here. Oh, no, don't worry. They're coming. Uh, oh, don't worry. And I'll be filing a lawsuit against you for that's the violations fine. of my rights. That's fine. You're more than welcome. I'm I've done here, nothing wrong. That's fine. You have nothing against me. Okay. This is harassment. Okay, that's fine. Am I under arrest? Right now you're going to be detained, yes. You're not under arrest, but right now you're being detained. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, I'm telling you. You're being detained. You're not under arrest as of yet. What am I being detained for? For obstruction. Obstruction of what? Yeah, I asked you to give me my name, right? I don't have to give you my name unless, that's, that's you, unless you I've see. committed that's a fine. crime. That's the way you want to see it. That's fine. I'm done for. Can you, can you please tell me what um, probable cause you have to even be here? I'm going to speak to you, but we're going to do it on my terms. Well, actually, no. See, I'm your boss. <laughs> okay. 
the people, yeah, you're my boss. the yeah. people, That's no we problem. are, we are the boss. Yeah, yeah, you're my boss. We created you. I, we and created I did it myself. Well, yeah, you see the people. <laughs> I am us. the people. Am I not? No, you're a police oh, well, officer. Well, I'm not personal. You're you're acting okay. under color of law right now. Is I what am you're doing. Under the color of law. Thank you. you color of law. Help. Exactly. You just helped my argument. I'm acting under the color of the law. Color of law. Sorry, you keep using which means it's not actually law. law. You don't really understand. Oh, I do understand okay. them. I understand. That's fine. I actually do quite a bit of research about no, this that's, stuff. That's good. You're acting under color of law, which means you don't actually have any real authority okay. to be here. That's fine. Unless I've committed a crime, you have no right to be stopping me, asking me questions or anything. Yeah, it's not for. It's going to be the building right on the north side, right when you turn on from Stable 7. You're gonna stay right here with me. Don't. I said, you're gonna stay right here. Talk to me. Take this. You better take stop this. right now. Do not resist. I'm telling you, do not resist. I'm not resisting. Stop the pain. Stop you are resisting. You are assaulting me. What am I resisting? Get out of the fucking floor. If I'm not being arrested, then what are you fucking attacking me? I'm telling you, get down on the floor. Can you please stop resisting? Get down on the floor. Why are you attacking me? Get down on the fucking floor. Why are you attacking me? Get down on the fucking floor. Why are you attacking me? Work this girl. Why are you attacking me? Get down on the floor. Get Why are you attacking me? Okay. Could you stop fucking attacking me? Get down on the fucking floor. Stop hitting me. Get down on the floor. I don't want to go on the floor. I'm telling you. Tony, just have him come in, please. Get down on the you floor. You guys calling this asshole assaulting me? Get down on the floor. I'm not even fucking on the ground. Get on the ground. I'm on the ground. Turn around. I, I'm not. Hello. Ow! Put your hand behind your back! There's like five police officers on here. This is what happens? Rich, for no reason? I have done nothing wrong. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing you can do at this point. He's already going in handcuffs. Because they, he, he was walking, I guess, to go back in his office. And the office All right, told now we can go to jail. And now they took him to jail. You guys record it all then, right? He was, he was walking away. He was walking away, bruh. <laughs> the officer can be heard in the video stating that they have to take his children from him. They then ask the business owner to present his ID, and he refuses. During the course of the encounter, the business owner states that it is his right to remain silent and they could speak to his attorney if they wanted. But the social worker and police officers persist and insist they are conducting an investigation and also that he has to provide his ID. The business owner asks what it is they are investigating and the officer states child abuse and neglect. When the business owner asks what the basis or probable cause is for these allegations, no answer is given. The officer eventually forces his way into the office and the business owner lets him know he is not welcome, that he is trespassing. He made it very clear without a warrant he is not going to answer any questions. The officer accuses him of obstructing their investigation, and when the business owner continues to refuse to, let, to give him his name, the officer assaults him. Within a very short period of time, more police officers arrive and throw the business owner to the floor and handcuff him. The person who picks up the camera to resume filming states there was a total of five police officers at that point. The entire encounter, therefore, and the reason the police assaulted the business owner inside his place of business, appears to be simply because he refuses to give them his name. We contacted the business owner, and at the time of publication, he had been released from the police and he stated that his children have not yet been detained. He has allegedly retained the services of an attorney and could not provide us any more details based on the advice of his attorney. And we'll be back right after this message.
Our Taken of the Month is the granddaughter of Cindy Matheson of Minnesota. This little girl knew exactly what was happening to her as her family made their goodbye visit to her. It boggles the mind that this type of legal torture is occurring right now every day as a result of corrupt family court decisions based on funding and not the best interest of the child. To force a parent to tell a child, after today we won't see each other anymore, is cruel and unusual punishment. Every week as we open our show you see pictures of those children that have lost their lives in adoption or foster care. Today we have another one to add, sadly. Murdered by the hands of the state, this is Alexis Nicole Long. 19-month-old baby girl died of blunt force trauma after apparently being thrown onto a changing table by her adoptive mother, Jennifer Long. Mrs. Long was, was charged with murder. Father Timothy Long was charged with second-degree cruelty to children. Let's go to the Michigan for Parental Rights Wall of Shame right now. Angel Lane Place died on September 17th in Colorado after her foster mother, Sydney Danielle White, admitted accidentally dropping the 11 month old girl and shaking the child violently while holding her by the neck. Why did the infant girl end up in foster care? She had been taken from her biological parents by Mesa County Human Services because the girl's mother said the couple fought and Angel's father smoked marijuana. White told police that on September 15th, Angel went on a crying fit and would not stop. White then held Angel by the neck with both hands and shook her multiple times, according to the police. The 20-year-old, who described herself to police as out of control, shook the baby by the neck and wouldn't stop until one of her own children saw what she was doing and pleaded with her, Mommy, stop it. After the shaking incident, Angel Lynn Place went to sleep and would not wake up for her nap. She was rushed to a hospital, but was unresponsive. The baby was removed from life support on September 17th. Cindy Daniel White, you're on the Michigan for Parental Rights Wall of Shame. And that was this week's edition of the Wall of Shame, and let's go to Baby LK. My attorney won't do anything to help with my case. My lawyer won't even return my phone calls. Good evening. I'm Baby LK. If you are innocent of CPS allegations and your attorney isn't doing his job or has told you to just do what they want to get your children back, has advised you to submit to guilt of the allegations, or has not suggested a trial, that is a red flag that your attorney is indifferent to your case. You have the right to make your attorney work for you by letting him know that you expect his best defense. You should make sure that he is knowledgeable about child protection law and CPS policy and procedures. You should agree to use email for community communication to save time and set a reasonable schedule to review your case, for example, twice a month. In the meantime, you need to help your lawyer do his job. Create a list of questions and issues for your next conference. Send them to him in one email, unless, of course, you have an urgent matter to contend with. If you aren't a part of the attorney-client team, don't expect anything but for him to take the easy road by doing nothing. And every state has an online attorney complaint board, and if your attorney is not cooperative, it's time to ask him to to withdraw and file a complaint to the state bar. Always remember that if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. And until next time, this is Baby LK, over and out.
each and every one of you for joining us this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make the, the difference. difference.